Hi, my name is Aaron Dewald. I'm the Associate Director for the Center for Innovation and Legal Education at the S.J. Quinney College of Law. And I'm also a PhD student in learning science. I'm excited to share with you an introduction to item analysis. The next few videos are going to give us a high-level introductory overview of item analysis. It's not intended that this be a rigorous, PhD-level overview of numbers and calculations, but more of a simple objective view of what the numbers actually mean and how we can practically use them to make adjustments to the formative and summative assessments that we use in the classroom. So, let's get started. Numbers Everywhere, an introduction to item analysis. As educators, we spend a ton of time thinking about and writing assessments, right? From choosing the right type of question, to writing the question, which we'll call the STEM, to creating suitable potential answers, which we'll call distractors. We invest a lot of time thinking about and constructing our tests. But how do we know whether or not we've done a good job thinking about and creating the assessment? Is it really just simply a matter of how well the students do on the assessment? Remember, we base the successes and failures of our students on our ability to write the questions in the assessment. Fortunately, there is a process that we can use to help break down an assessment into its component parts, which are questions and answers, and then think about how effective each are. This process is called item analysis. Item analysis is a powerful tool that can tell us a ton about how that item, now we're going to use item and question interchangeably, is functioning. It answers questions like how difficult an individual item is, how good of a job is the question doing in identifying good and bad performances, and it can also give us insight into whether or not the answers that we've chosen are doing a good job. So the question is, why in the world do we even need to look at item analysis? Now I'm sure that you agree, there must be a connection between what is taught or learned and what is assessed. There also needs to be an effort put forth to measure knowledge on a continuum, from basic foundational levels of knowledge to, in some cases, more advanced levels of knowledge. If we're delivering tests that are way too hard, our students might quit due to frustration or lack of confidence in their knowledge and abilities. And on the flip side, if we're delivering tests that are way too easy, it might lead to low motivation or decrease our ability to say someone actually knows the topic because we're assigning easy questions that anyone off the street could answer. If we develop a large pool of questions that measure knowledge across many levels, from easy to hard, we can improve our assessments by drawing on the right question at the right time for the particular student. Another benefit of item analysis is to improve our test items by identifying and editing or removing unfair or biased items. We can use item analysis to help rephrase our question stem or rework the distractors we've used if a particular distractor is being chosen more often than, say, the right answer, then we might need to rephrase how we've asked that question or how the distractor is worded. It also allows us to identify and look at misconceptions that might be pervasive among our students, allowing us to adjust our learning modules accordingly. So, what do the numbers in item analysis tell us? In its most basic form, once we've created a question and have had multiple students take that question, we can assess the item using a few different methods. Now, not all of these methods will be used by everyone, but they all tell us something useful about the question. A question's difficulty level. We can find this out by looking at the number of students who answered the question correctly. This is called an item's difficulty. A question's ability to discriminate between the high and low performers by comparing the number of students getting the answer correct with their total quiz score. And finally, Item analysis can give us insight into how our questions are being answered, allowing us to see whether or not our distractors are functioning the way they should. Item analysis provides us with an iterative loop that tells us how our questions are performing, and then encourages us to look at them a little more critically to fix or rewrite them. Each time a question is given to students, we learn just a little bit more about how that question is performing and can become more confident in interpreting what it's telling us. Now that you've heard a little bit about the key parts of item analysis, you're super excited to learn more, right? Great. The next episode is going to talk about item difficulty, which is easy in theory, but gives us some great information about the question. We'll see you there.